Hi, I'm Ken Pinto, author of the book, How Much is the Milk? The only supply chain management book written specifically for residential construction. Or at least I'm pretty sure it's the only one. And this YouTube channel has been created in response to you. Questions and comments from readers and folks I run across in social media and industry events. It seems a lot of you have the same questions. <clears throat> now I know a lot about construction. I know a lot about supply chain management. I don't know anything about your company. <clears throat> so best I can do is share my uh, knowledge, skills, and experiences with you and let you decide how to use the information. The value of this, this channel will be significantly improved with your participation. So use the comment section below. To put in your questions, comments, concerns, or just a suggestion on another video that you'd like to see done. Uh, like and subscribe so that you get notified when uh, new videos come out. You know, we have a lot to talk about. So let's get started with our next video. In January of 2022, the price of diesel fuel was $3.72 a gallon. Just a few months later, the month of May, it jumped to $5.57 a gallon. Immediately, the fuel surcharges, demands came raining upon the industry and it affected everyone up the supply chain from raw materials to manufacturing to distributors to wholesalers all the way to the job site. So how do you know when to pay a fuel surcharge? What triggers it? How much should it be? And what about the duration? When the price goes back down, when do you back off on that? And do you back off on all of it? Do you delete the entire surcharge? Or do you keep half of it? What do you do? I'll show you how to construct a paragraph that goes into each one of your agreements that answers all of those questions and makes it clear for the buyer and the seller what happens when the fuel prices change. <clears throat> Diesel fuel is the lifeblood of logistics. It fuels ships, trains, and trucks that move products from one place to another. Everyone is affected when fuel prices change. Diesel fuel comes from crude oil, and crude oil, when refined, can, makes, based on the uh, quality of the crude oil, 20 gallons of gasoline, 12 gallons of diesel fuel, 4 gallons of jet fuel, 1 gallon of asphalt, and 5 gallons of other. <clears throat> now, not all refineries like to make 1 gallon of asphalt because, well, frankly, they don't get very much money for it. So. Uh, that's why sometimes on our job sites we have a tough time getting all the asphalt we need. And the five gallons of other, well other is a lot of different things and we're going to do a different video on acrylic resins in the future of which other is included. And so look for that on a future video. We'll also dedicate an entire video just to asphalt. <clears throat> so look for that in the future. So diesel fuel and each of these derivatives of oil has its own supply and demand ratios and factors, and so the pricings fluctuate, but they hold pretty tight to the one thing they have in common, the price of a barrel of oil. If you'll take a look at this graph that shows gas, diesel, and oil prices from 2020, 2004 to 2021, <clears throat> you see throughout this graph, they do follow a single trend, which is basically the price of oil. And in some years, those lines are really tight together and in some lines are pretty far apart. Now the supply and demand of each of those is what drives the, the pricing, which puts it either closer to the price of barrel oil or further away from it. And you can see in recent years, diesel and gasoline have pulled pretty far away from the, the bottom line is oil. And that's because demand has increased significantly. The source of this information is the source you should use for all of your fuel uh, data. It comes from the U.S. Energy Information Administration, the EIA. I want you to encourage you to use information from EIA. I have, in the past, had a couple of purchasing managers try to convince me that the best source of information for the price of diesel fuel was the gas station that they drove by every day on the way to work. 
know, the gas station's been there for 60 years and they see it every single day and that was their barometer for for judging prices please don't do that go to the best source which is accepted throughout the entire logistics agency industry is the EIA use the EIA data please the gas stations you know their owners adjust prices based on lots of different things variables that we don't want included in uh, in, in our business uh, and if the gas station changes ownership it's a whole nother set of uh, priorities we don't want that variability to be in our contracts so use something solid use the EIA data so here are a couple of screenshots from the EIA website so this first one is from oil so I, I collect oil information once a week and I use the WTI Cushing oil you can measure Brent crude you can measure both of them I mean there's there's choices here on how you want to track this commodity I just I only track WTI that seems to work out best for me and here's a screenshot for gas and oil from the same websites from the EIA website and here are the gas prices for this week and don't worry if you had if you forget to pull this information down for a couple of weeks you can always pull the history and gather the information from there so what is a fair price to be paying for a fuel surcharge or should you be paying one at all if you look at the UPS website if you're shipping with UPS right now you look at their their website they're charging 16.25 percent surcharge for fuel now based on what I don't know because I tried to find information on what that was based on and it's not available probably so that you cannot argue with it uh, is my guess you know when we write a contract or an agreement with someone who delivers materials to our job sites we assume that the price of fuel to deliver those materials is included right that's a reasonable assumption but what if the price does go up a little bit or a lot what if the price goes down should you make a change how much of a change <clears throat> if you if you the if the seller knows that you're not going to pay a fuel surcharge regardless of what happens they will probably pad their pricing just a little bit to reduce the risk of a potential uh, increase in fuel prices if they do that you will likely pay more for that padding than you would for a fuel surcharge one of the convenient things about a fuel surcharge is that um, it's easy to add and easy to delete without being uh, mixed up within all the other things within a uh, within a contract so I would like to share with you what I believe is the best practice for managing fuel fluctuation changes so the, include this information in the paragraph of every one of your agreements or contracts that you have I'll pull it up on the screen so this is my process <laughs> develop a baseline fuel price for today so the, at the time you sign the contract uh, pull the EIA data, data and see what today's fuel price is in there and put that in and that becomes the baseline from which everything else is going to be compared to and then next is a trigger so what triggers a change and so you don't want to do change orders every time the fuel price changes 10 cents right that would be too much administrative burden so when do you make a change is it when it's a dollar over the baseline or two dollars over the baseline and that's between you and your and your seller your supplier to determine what the, that increment is going to be for the purposes of this exercise I'm using one dollar as the trigger so when the price of fuel goes up one dollar over our baseline then that could trigger a fuel surcharge and then the next thing you need to add into this paragraph is the delivery distance so from this, this supplier to your job site and your contracts are generally project specific so every project is going to be different how many miles is that and so for the purposes of this exercise I am assuming that it's 15 miles and so uh, 15 miles to deliver to your job site and 15 miles to go back empty that's a 30 mile trip so 30 miles is what I'm going to be using in this in this example so your fuel formula your fuel price adjustment formula is the current fuel price minus the baseline equals X and then X divided by six miles per gallon because most delivery vehicles get about six miles per gallon I've been using that number for a long time it's widely accepted uh, amongst trunks trucks of all sizes so in this example uh, 
$5.57 minus $3.72 equals $1.85 difference in price of, the, of diesel, which equates to 31 cents a mile at six miles per gallon. And at 30 miles, a surcharge of $9.30 would then be allowed. So here you have to think about the administrative burden. Is it worth it to write a change order for $9.30? You have to decide. I mean, I know, I know that these numbers add up, uh, the fuel cost increases add up for your supplier, and you just need to decide whether it's worth $9.30 to write the change order. I suspect that it will cost you more in administrative burden than that change order will be worth. And now think about your, to your whole house. So of, of all the uh, fuel surcharge uh, change orders that you've made, what do they equate to for an entire house? <clears throat> now, your, your house gets about 30 deliveries per, per year, or I'm sorry, per house. Each house gets 30 deliveries. If you've got $9.30 worth of surcharge for each one of those houses, that equates to about $279 in total additional fuel surcharge. If you're paying a lot more than that, you really need to uh, uh, look into how the you know what formula is being used to create the surcharges that you're being charged. In this last slide is a um, is a graph of oil, gas, and diesel just for the past 17, 18 months. Can you see how there's a there's a uh, big difference in the gas line compared to oil and diesel? It's much lower, which is inconsistent with the first graph I showed you of 17 years worth of information, that's not typical. And so you have to ask what's going on there. <clears throat> and if you read commodity news on energy, which I do, uh, the speculators are saying that the United States flooded the uh, industry with lots of oil from their reserves to lower the price of gas. There is, and this is a fact, that there is a direct correlation between the price of gasoline and the U.S. president's approval rating. So if the price of gas gets really high, the approval ratings of the president gets really low. I, I know that's strange, but it's a fact, a statistically proven fact. Um, so the suspicion is, from the energy speculators, is that once November hits, that's all going to change. So does that mean price of gas is going to go up significantly? I'll leave that up to you to, to decide. So I want to encourage you to make EIA data part of each one of your contracts so there's a clear understanding between buyer and seller exactly what triggers a, a, a fuel surcharge and what doesn't and when it should go away. So I've left some links in the comments section below uh, to, to get to the websites that I've shown you. And there's also a, a coupon code down there for 15% off of my book. Feel free to share that with anyone. Uh, it's, uh, it's great for uh, birthdays and uh, bar mitzvahs uh, and wedding gifts. Oh, great wedding gifts. Yeah. Uh, my wife's going to kill me for saying that. Well, should I survive? I'll see you on the next video.